Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today I'm going to answer the age old question of which Samsung good lock modules are worth it. Which ones are actually beneficial and give you a better experience on your Samsung Galaxy device. Now this right here is just my opinion only. These are the ones that are definitely ones that will help your experience on your Samsung phone. I'll share with you which modules and which features inside of that module to actually turn on and also try. And everything else is really just if you wanna add a little bit more flair or completely change the way that your phone looks and, and operates. So this is just really the bare minimum of the best experience from Samsung GoodLock module. Now, if you're brand new to GoodLock, really all it is is it's a application that's made by Samsung for Samsung. You can download it for free from the Galaxy Store. And pretty much inside this application houses a whole bunch of modules to change and add either your experience or features in all these different categories like your keyboard uh, you can change your themes you have stuff with your sound assistant you can even add in the different types of vibrations and create your own vibration for a phone call or text message you can add in new features and more features to your camera and more stuff with like edge lighting you can change things with quick stars so you can change how your quick panel looks you can add in the date on the top so it makes it super simple no matter where you're at with whatever application now this video is in chronological order from my favorite to the least favorite, even though they're all my favorites, uh, I just had to put them in order in some way. So I will have timestamps below the video inside the description and the pinned comment if you'd like to move around, skip around, and take a look at some of these different modules. So starting this video off with number one is Quickstar. Now the reason why I chose Quickstar to be number one is because it actually helps me multiple times a day, not only in one situation, but a couple. First off, you can see on the very top that I have the time as well as the date. Now, originally out of the box without this turn on, pretty much you only just see the time and that is it. So it doesn't matter if you're on your home screen and anywhere on my home screen, I don't even have a widget that tells me what the date or even the day is. I work from home, so every day is pretty much almost the exact same anyways. So you would have to pull down once just to see what the day and the date is. So if you wanna just take a quick glance and you don't have to try to run around your phone or whatever, it will always be on the very top left-hand side. You just turn this on, boom, at any point in time, I look at my phone and I can see the day and the date and the time. Pretty much this is where you can have customization. So if you tap on it, you can choose it to have the, the day, the date. You also have this uh, combination, that combination, this combination. However you want it to look on the very top, this is the one that I like to use. So it's just simply at any point in time, other than the camera, I can always just look on the top left. I know exactly what day and date it is. Now you can also throw in your AMs and PMs. It just kind of makes things a little bit too long. I can tell the difference between AM and PM, uh, so I don't need that. But the show seconds is actually pretty cool, and that's where if you actually do pull it down, you can see the seconds right there. So if you're um, trying to time something really quick, if you're looking at a heart rate or whatever, you can just pull it down and you got your seconds right there if you're not wearing a watch. So that's where you can throw in your date as well as the seconds. And you can actually change the position of it if you want to, you left, hide, or you can put it on the right. Uh, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I just like it set up like this. Again, we're trying to get things to be beneficial and helpful on your Samsung phone. Now, the next thing will be right over here, and that is your quick settings. So quick settings is there as quick settings, something to get very quickly. So if I pull this down, you can see that I have a lot more of my quick settings right there because these spaces are narrow. And that was you know, put by design by me. So pretty much what it normally looked like is if I turn this one off, I pulled this down, what you'll be able to see is that this is probably what yours looks like, but I would have to expand it more to see the other stuff that I placed there. Now, here's the thing. If you turn this on and you bring this all the way to narrow, now it's gonna look just like this. I don't have to expand it more. I know exactly what all these little icons are. I threw them in there. If I forget what they are, I can swipe down real quick and there is the name. So that is how you can show more of your quick settings to access all of them quicker. Then the lastly here, you can adjust the separated panel you know, ratio. So as you remember in One UI 7, if I swipe down, this is my notifications, I swipe to the right, here's my quick settings. Now you can change the ratio of where you want it to be split in your phone. Right now, if I swipe over there, it'll be notifications. If I swipe here, it'll be notifications. And how I have mine set up is that where I see that beginning icon right there, that is where my quick settings will pop up. So you can change this however you want it to look and operate for you. 
you can just press right here and you can change this. So if you want it to be completely split down the center, everything on the left is your quick, is your notifications. Everything on the right is your quick settings. Then all I did was I put mine right around there. So I know for the fact that I can swipe down anywhere or maybe just from the middle of the home screen, it pulls down my notifications. But if I start with my icons, this is my quick settings right there. If I just go right there, it's gonna be my notifications. So this is what I would turn on for QuickStar. Module number two, this one will be Sound Assistant. Now for Sound Assistant, there's a couple things you can do. One of them is definitely beneficial for me and hopefully it could be beneficial for you. And that is changing the step volume. So pretty much what this does here is that out of the box stock, Samsung's volume rocker over here, when you press it up or down, will move by 10. So you can see that I go from zero to 10 to 20 to 30. Yes, you can press and hold and it'll just kind of go up to like whatever, uh, but it will kind of keep it as a like even number from the tens. You can actually go through and you can change it and precisely put it to a number, but then you have to be as precise as possible. So it might take you a second to get it to the exact number you want. So what I would suggest is just moving your step right down to five. And I like this because when I go into, let's say the room at night, the spouse is laying in bed, I don't want to disturb. I can hit my volume run once and it's on five. And I found out that five is actually pretty good for watching content or whatever. And if you wanted to, you can actually even bring it down even more. You can change it by two. So this way, when you're laying down, now you're gonna be at volume three, but uh, I'm just gonna share with you here this number five because you know, if you are listening to something in bed at night or you're at work or you're wherever you're in public and you don't want it to be going from 10 to zero or zero to 10 to 20, you can go all of those steps in between by fives. Also, what helps is that sometimes you listen to music, you put it all the way to 100 but then it's a little too loud for that song. You put it down to 90, but then you just want a little bit more. So with a simple press, you can just put it right to 95 in between the step counter that Samsung did for their volume. Now, the next thing that you can also do is you can go down and you can customize your own vibration patterns. So for this one, let's say that you wanted to add one for ringtone. So you have three different areas. You pretty much have your high, your mid, and your low. It kind of depends on how much vibration you want to happen. So pretty much what I can do is I can just, you know, hit on this little stop. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to make my own. I'm going to be like, do, 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 like whatever. I can make it however I want. So if you want to, you know, like throw in like a beat in there, you can, you can go like, you can also do one where maybe it's starting low first. So you're like, and then it goes, so it's a little bit higher of one. So you can just create your own. You can have one that just goes for a long time of low, goes to nothing. You can have one that goes mid and then nothing and then high. So this way it kind of starts off as like a low vibrate and you can hit play. So this one's pretty low. It's just kind of sitting there. It has a small vibration. Now it's going to a higher vibration, nothing. And then now it's going to be the highest vibration. So if you're, if you're missing it, you know, you can hopefully get it towards the end. When you create one that you like, you hit this, you hit save, and then you can go from like, uh, I'm going to say like low, mid, high. So I know that I'm going to go from this like low, mid, high, and that is now going to be my new vibration setting for a ringtone. You can do the same thing with notifications. So you can do one that's like, do, 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 do. You can be like, do, 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 do. And then if you still didn't get it, press and hold with like a low one. So then now that's gonna be your new one for your uh, notification. So again, if you like it, hit save and then you select it and then that's gonna be your new vibration. If you want something to be very simple, you can just be like high, high, low. So it's kind of like you missed the first two, maybe you got that one. Or the opposite way, you could be like low, high, high. So it's gonna be like one that's very, very quick. So you don't have to fill the full entire thing. So let's go with low, high, high. And that's it. So then this right here is now going to be your vibration for a notification. So you can go through and you can create your own. The other thing that you can do with Sound Assistant is you can make your own volume panel. So this is going like above and beyond. This is like changing the way that your phone looks. This is all uh, you know up to your uh, preferences of how you want it to look. You can change the way the standard looks, the expanded looks, add stuff in, take stuff out, put it on like left panel, you know, you put it towards the right. You can tap this, you can move it up, move it down. 
And whenever you have it set up to where you want it to be, then you can actually just create your own in terms of the color. So for this one, you can change the lighting effect. Uh, you can go down, you can change it, you know, the type of texture. You can make it to where it's like round rather than like a bar. As you scroll down, you can take a look at all the different shapes for options. You select it. And then pretty much once you're done, this is now going to be your new volume panel. Module number three, this one is Home Up. Now for Home Up, there is a lot of stuff that you can do, a lot of customizations. I've already shown off this full entire app in a past video. I changed all of the different gestures when it comes down to all of the animations and the animation scale and how everything will bounce back, bounce up, bounce down, however I want it to look. You also have stuff with like edge panels. You have your uh, home screen. So if you want to make it all completely free form, textured, big and small, whatever you want. But if that looks a little bit too childish, one of the things that you can definitely use will be Task Changer. Task Changer is where you can change the way that it looks for your recent applications. So the one that I used here is a vertical list and I made it kind of look a little bit more circular. So rather than it being just a straight line of recent applications, you can see that it's kind of a little bit of a circular animation right here. And so this right here is how my recent application list looks. So the way that it looked from beforehand, when you take a look at your task changer, this is what it looked like from before. And you know, this one does actually work really well. I've used this for a long time. Um, but if I wanted to just kind of put a little bit more flair to mind, something that is beneficial, looks a little bit different, more customized to me, uh, I can scroll up and down, have a cool animation effect as well too. I can still tap on these little icons and I have all of my little options with these applications as well. So I don't need to have the full entire screen of an application showing. And that is kind of more for my privacy. So when you take a look at with this turned off, right? People can have a full entire look of a application. Maybe you don't want them to read your full entire email or take a look at your full entire social media or whatever the beautiful case. I like this one here for vertical list. It's a little bit smaller. You can't see everything. You don't get the full entire effect. They're not gonna see your full entire email, maybe just the title and subject. So that is what I did here for the task changer that's inside of HomeUp. Module number four, this is Camera Assistant. Now, what I love about Camera Assistant is that once you install this on your phone from this module here, it'll actually show up inside of your camera. So if you open to your camera, you went to settings, you'll see all of your Camera Assistant settings there inside of settings, which is awesome. So you don't have to go back inside of GoodLock to change any of these. So the ones I turn on is Zoom shortcuts. I'd rather have more shortcuts for these Zooms, so I threw them in there. So I wouldn't have to tap on the screen additionally to find another zoom shortcut to choose. It'll just be there on the very bottom for my instant use. Now, next up, what you're able to change, uh, you can take a look at these ones. These are to your preference, quick tap shutter, which means pictures will take as soon as you touch the shutter. Um, so it's, you know, it might not focus immediately. So at least once you tap it, it's going to take the picture immediately. And this one's kind of the opposite. You wait for the camera to finish focusing before triggering the shutter. So you can take a look at both of these, whichever one you would like to use. I just use whatever stock on the phone, but towards the bottom down over here, this is where I turned on two minutes. So I have a camera timeout. So sometimes you open the camera, you set it down, you set some things up. Um, I set it to where if it's longer than two minutes, it's just going to shut the camera application for me. But this one's also one that's very nice. It'll help you with your battery life. So if you start recording something, then after a minute of no input, it'll dim the screen. Now for me, I might be still looking at things, looking at the setup after a full minute, I will you know, maybe double look, triple look during that first minute. But usually after it passes the two minute mark anyways, I've kind of walked away if I'm doing especially like a time lapse or something like that. So you do have the screen or dim the screen while recording. So maybe you're at a concert, a recital, you're at some event, uh, maybe it's a dim lit location or room that you are in, pretty much your screen will also dim so it's not a bright screen for everybody else to watch. So again, a couple of really nice features. Module number five, we will go inside of Nice Shot. Now for Nice Shot, there's only one thing that I really turned on, and that is the delete button once you take a screenshot. So originally, out of the box, let's say that you go through and you take a screenshot, uh, you have no option to delete it. So maybe a notification popped up the second you took a screenshot, uh, now you have to go through your gallery and delete it anyways. 
So if you turn this one on here, which is add delete button, when you do your little screenshot, if something popped up, you don't want this one, you want to redo it, you hit delete. Now that image is deleted and now you can just go through and do it again. So it's very nice. Just turn on this one little feature inside of nice shot. Now finishing out this video, we'll take a look at Pentastic. So for this one, uh, on the very bottom, this is probably the most important portion of this module, and that is what happens if you were to do a double tap. So pretty much what happens is if you press down on the S Pen button, you double tap. For me, what makes sense was this whole writing on the screen type thing. So screen write is what I chose because sometimes I would want to take a screenshot of something or circle something, maybe an article has happened. I want to do you know, whatever is important uh, or you know what I could do again, I'll press and hold double tap. Uh, I can actually like draw arrows to you know the thing I want for Christmas or what we should get them for Valentine's or whatever the case. Uh, you can you know do your screen right. So that is what's important for me here, which is that what happens if you press and hold the S Pen button and do a double tap. But if you tap down there, this is where you can choose what you want it to do. There's a lot of actions, but then there's also applications that you can open. Now up over here is where you can just kind of go through a little bit of above and beyond type of stuff. So you, this is what your error command looks like if you pull the S Pen out or if you hit the S Pen button, it'll open everything up on the right hand side. The one that I kind of went with is this old option that we used to have and use back in the day. Uh, there's actually this retro one that's like, you know, old note series type of stuff. So for this one, I did the little circle. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, and so what it kind of looks like here is that I can just press my S Pen button. It opens up right over here. I can swipe between all the applications I add in. So if you swipe, you hit this plus button, you can add in more stuff to do. So it's just kind of a way to make your phone look a little bit different than everybody else's, uh, but it works for me. I don't have it to, you know, take up the full entire, you know, right hand side of my, my phone. Also, you can change the pointer, but I'm going to keep it simple. I don't want to uh, change it. I'm going to keep it right there as a little dot. And you can also change the sound. So you have a couple different sound options that you can choose. I've done this ever since like the Note 2. I've always changed my custom sound. And I think it's actually almost the exact same sounds here. There's a couple additional ones that I also used, but I've always kind of had this Mario Brothers coin sound. So this is what happens when I pull out the S Pen. It'll make that Mario Brothers coin like da ding sound. And then I also have the insert sound of Mario Power Up. I also used to have the sounds of when you entered a tunnel and when you exited a tunnel, that's what I used to use in the past. Uh, and so I can just kind of have this one here too, because it's just kind of fun when you actually hear these sounds and your phone's not on vibrate. But yeah, so that is all of the modules that I would suggest to use. Uh, there is a lot more that is on there. Some of them to me personally, on my opinion, is just a little bit too much, a little bit overkill, a little bit of uh, bloatware, as you may say. So what is fun is when you do turn any of these on, you go to you and you can take a look at what you did with all these different modules. So you have dim screen, you have the adding in of the, uh, the additional shortcuts for zooms. You, uh, here's my home up, which really I'm only just using, you know, with the task changer. Here is quick star, I changed my clock settings. Uh, change quick settings, buttons, grid, adjust separated panel ratio, sound assistant. You can also see what I did there. So I have different vibration patterns, my step volume, my flex UI and customized volume panel. Really the only one that didn't really give me exactly what I did correctly is home up, but you know, that'll just come with like a little bit of a update. These ones here show exactly what I changed inside of those modules, if you ever forget. But hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. Hopefully you have learned something and picked something out in this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.